Have you ever wondered why, if every cell in your body houses the exact same DNA, why doesn't every cell function exactly the same? For example, why do some cells make up our skin, while other cells become part of the fingernail, and some become hairs? It all comes down to differential gene expression, for which there are many controls. Let's take a closer look. Inside the cell now, we see the nuclear envelope separating the nucleus, which houses the DNA, from the cytosol. The first control of gene expression is transcriptional. Then comes RNA processing control when pre-mRNA is alternatively spliced. Next is control of RNA transport and localization. Then, RNA is either degraded or translated. And finally, you have post-translational control. Now let's return to transcriptional control of gene expression, one form of which occurs through epigenetics. Epigenetic changes alter the physical structure of DNA without altering the sequence. DNA methylation is an epigenetic system that affects the development of an organism and can be passed on from parent to offspring. Methylation in animals happens specifically on the cytosine of CPG dinucleotides circled red here. These are dinucleotides where a cytosine is followed by a guanine linearly in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction with only a phosphate between them. A methyl group is added to the fifth position of the cytosine ring to form 5-methyl cytosine. The enzymes that catalyze these reactions are called DNA methyltransferases, or DNMTs. Specifically, the original methylation is put on by DNMT3. For simplicity's sake, we're just going to show the methyls without the enzymes bringing them in from here on out. There are two possible ways that methylation inhibits transcription. The methyl group on the DNA may keep transcription factors from binding and initiating transcription. Alternatively, the methyl group on the DNA may attract transcription-inhibiting proteins to bind, such as those that encourage tighter coiling of the DNA. Where's my binding site? I can't find my binding site. Have you seen it? Most insects have very little methylation. However, recent scientific research on honeybees suggests they may have more complex methylation. Honeybees are social insects and their colonies are divided into a caste system comprised of male drones, sterile female workers, and a queen bee. The role that a bee plays in the colony is determined partially by sex and partially by epigenetic control. The worker bees are smaller in size and lack ovaries for reproduction. They are responsible for hive maintenance, defense, brood rearing, and foraging. The primary role of drone bees is to spread his genes by mating with the fertile female of a different colony. The queen bee is larger and is the only female in the colony with ovaries developed enough to lay eggs. Here we see the honeybee larvae in their honeycomb homes. Larvae fed the worker jelly develop into worker bees, whereas larvae fed the royal jelly develop into queen bees. The nutritional differences between the jellies influence the fate of female bee development through DNA methylation. The nutritive components of the royal jelly silence DNMT3. When DNMT3 is silenced, the methyl group is not able to bind to the DNA. Researchers observed a global decrease in DNA methylation of queen bees. Specifically, researchers observed 
reduce DNA methylation in the dynactin P62 gene. Dynactin P62 is known to respond to dietary changes. In worker bees, the gene has many methyl groups. In contrast, the queen bees have no or few methyl groups. In summary, when larvae are fed royal jelly, the DNMT3 enzyme is silenced, which prevents the methyl group from binding to the DNA and results in queen bee development. When larvae are fed worker jelly, DNMT3 is active, the DNA is methylated and the larvae develops into a worker bee. Honeybees are a model organism for studying epigenetics. These findings have motivated future work on epigenetic regulation of gene expression in insects and higher eukaryotes. For example, researchers aim to investigate how nutrition can affect human reproduction and behavior through epigenetic mechanisms.